Hi, welcome to Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking about power electronics, but more specifically about silicon carbide and gallium nitride. And I have Lisa from Broadcom. Hi, Lisa. Do you want to say hello to Design Spark? Hi there. Uh, thank you for having me today. My name is Lisa Dietrich. I'm a field application engineer for Broadcom, working in the area of optoelectronics here in Europe. Fantastic. Lisa, just before we, we get started, could you just tell me what what is it that's different between SICK, GAN and, and just normal silicon? OK, so when we talk about these um, silicon carbide and, and GAN um, devices, we speak about wide band gap semiconductors. There we're referring to materials that have a larger band gap um, than silicon based semiconductors, and that allows them to have a higher um, working voltage a higher current and higher frequencies than some of the tr traditional devices. And that means that they can be ideally used in power semiconductors, for example. OK, and, and then just specifically between um, silicon carbide and, and GAN, what, what are the main differences between those two types of material? OK, so the um, silicon carbide um, MOSFET types of devices used in the power switches, they use a type of, um, let's say, vertical or planar technology, which offers very high voltage and high power um, applications. And those can traditionally be used um, to replace many of the IGBT devices currently being used. And they tend to be used in, in let's say, higher voltages um, than GAN devices. There, GAN it tends to offer a higher um, switching frequency and would be to, um, used basically in applications that, let's say, only go up to about 650 volts. Okay. And in, in terms of when we're, we're talking a lot on the, the engineering side, um, things that have been mentioned around environmental and sustainability, and I always see that SICK is often referred to as an enabler of, of, of that approach. Why is that? Oh, yeah, very true. So so um, basically silicon carbide um, offers um, advantages in, in the power conversion. So um, reliability, high efficiency, power conversion is really crucial for us to meet the requirements for this energy transition, right? Um, we talk about green applications, we talk about e-mobility, and this is this transformation that is happening um, worldwide. And the fact that we need more efficiency to be able to do that properly. So, I mean, we all talk about electric vehicles um, being green, but the question then comes up, how green is our grid? You know, what can we do there to reduce costs, to reduce um, emissions and to increase efficiency on the renewable side? OK, and, and I guess obviously we've obviously reducing emissions, the CO2 emissions are dropping, so energy efficiency plays a big part in that. Am I right? Right, exactly. And that's where we start to get into the applications. So if we think about which applications um, are really critical for or hungry for energy efficiency, then you would think about renewable energies, a solar inverter, for example, right? We have um, a photovoltaic system and it really, it, we want to get every last bit of, of sun and efficiency converted in order for it to be um, an optimum system. And that's where some of the silicon carbide technology is used, especially for the larger inverters being used in the field, or even the GAN technology can be used for some of the smaller inverters. So this actual, um, it allows uh, the end products to be smaller, lighter, and just have increased efficiency itself. And for example, also we spoke about GAN being able to offer a higher switching of frequencies, often maybe at a less lesser voltage level. Um, and then if we think about switching frequency, we, we may think about electrical chargers, for example. So not only the, the grid side, the inverter side um, for maybe our homes or, or businesses, but also the charging for our, our automobiles. So um, fast charging requires high frequency, and that's where the GAN technology has more of a sweet spot, let's say. OK, and do, do, you, do you see the, the, the adoption of uh, SICK and GAN becoming the norm? So you were talking there about, um, you know, for renewables, um, charging, yeah. et cetera, utilities. Do, do you see that continuing? Uh, are, we, are we waiting more on the, the technology to develop and those applications will become more dominant as we move on? 
I, I think that that is definitely happening right now. So we're seeing really that so the newer um, inverter applications, the majority of the requests, you know, even we get for our products that are being used in that kind of application are now for um, the silicon carbide and GAN devices. Um, not to say that they, it, they will coexist for a while with our traditional, you know, IGBT and, and MOSFET devices. Um, but even then in the, let's say, factory um, automation area and motor drive yeah. devices, as we move forward, they will also convert to silicon carbide and GAN. So as the production start to come on board and the actual costs in um, economy of scale, let's say, of actually producing the, the um, power devices, as the, those in quantity, quantities increase, then overall it'll make the, um, the technology even more attractive for, let's say, traditional um, factory automation that can still be using silicon, um, pardon me, traditional silicon devices. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. it, just in terms of, of my understanding though, so Broad, Broadcom doesn't manufacture power uh, semiconductors, so yeah. where exactly is it that you guys are playing in the market? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. So we, we, we have been um, playing in the area of optical isolation now for, for many, many years. So Broadcom has, uh, is a specialist in optical isolation going back to the, the old HP Agilent Avago days. And um, the, the actual motor drive, inverters, converters, um, providing isolation in those kind of applications have, has been a focus for us for many, many years. Also in the last few years, even more so in electrical vehicles and battery management systems. So we've always had a play of um, on the isolation side. So you can imagine for power electronics, you have some high voltages and then you have lower voltages where you actually have your control signals and um, they need to be transferred to this high voltage area. And that's where the optical isolation comes oh, okay. into play. Okay. Yeah. So our optical isolation is used in the drivers, the gate drivers that we need to drive those um, silicon carbide and GAN power switches. So okay. the that's that's where the where we uh, start to play in that market. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's really good kind of like um, s s solution there for for uh, for application. So what what are the requirements uh, that are driving these uh, semiconductors efficiently? Okay, yeah, so that, that's one of the things that, that needs to be um, taken into, into play. It's very important. We have these, this capability to, um, to switch these uh, silicon carbide and GAN devices on and off very quickly, right? But it has to be done in a controlled manner because if you can imagine you have a voltage um, system that has a plus um, bus voltage and a minus bus voltage and you have a traditional um, setup, you don't want the power electronic on the plus to turn on the same time as on the minus. So you have certain things that need to be taken into consideration. And um, three of the main things, first of all, you need enough driving current. So it's current that's actually the output side of these optical isolated devices to drive the power electronic. You need very good isolation performance and you need some kind of protection. Yeah. Right, um, some kind of a fault feedback loop, um, and that's where um, our devices come into play. Okay, so, and and what is it that you're you're addressing with these these requirements? So, um, let's say on the um, current capability side, that's something that's really interesting with the latest portfolio that um, we have have released or are releasing. Um, is as we said, silicon carbide and GAN, they can switch on and off very quickly. And the higher the current we can deliver directly from the gate driver, this helps to overcome a certain amount of input capacitance and it helps to charge the silicon carbide and GAN very quickly. OK, so this optimizes the potential and improves the overall efficiency because we can really deliver up to 10 amps peak current from the isolation device. Then um, another thing that we're addressing, you can imagine we're talking the whole time about um, switching and uh, there's something called slew rate or, or DVDT. So when we have a very um, fast switching speed, there's noise, there's yeah. noise in the system. And if we look at some of our former devices, we didn't characterize the actual capability to 
um, suppress that noise very high. With some of our new drivers, we go up to 100 kilovolts per microsecond in those devices. So um, we can guarantee a very high noise immunity um, between um, the two sides of the system and also in this very, yeah, very high switching environment. So even if we have power cables or other things yeah. uh, nearby, um, you know, that there's no parasitic capacitance or something that's happening that's going to um, disturb the actual switching of the device. And then the third thing I mentioned is, is protection. So um, basically starting from, you know, we have something called basic gate drivers and smart gate drivers. And the basic gate drivers, or both of them, always have an under voltage lockout protection. So we want to make sure when the device is being um, powered up, the actual um, um, power switch or silicon carbide gate device, that the voltage level being provided is, is high enough to actually do the switching. So we don't yeah. get into a state that is, is undefined, right? So we have a flexible under voltage lockout that can be used for both silicon carbide and GAN. Uh -huh devices. Then we also have overcurrent monitoring and um, a soft shutdown feature in some of our, our advanced gate drivers, so the smart gate drivers. And even these have developed further with silicon carbide and GAN technologies so that they're now much quicker. So, um, you know, in, in the meantime, we have to make sure we can shut down the devices between, you know, one, two microseconds um, compared to maybe up to 10 microseconds in, in the early days for the IGBTs. So that's where some of the developments have been happening. In okay. Recently. Yeah. So, yeah, from, from a design perspective, then obviously that that's 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 really good. Good to know, you know, design engineers uh, talking about current capability, um, isolation, performance and overall protection all, all within the product. That, that That's great. Um, so in, in terms of the uh, help. We're talking about design engineers. What, what do you have available for for, for customers? Uh, are there design tools available or reference designs, for example? Right. Yeah, that's a very good question because as we as we've said, we don't actually make the power electronics. So our 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 side is the is the isolation and and the um, the driving um, components, and therefore we've we've. Um, partnered together with a number of different uh, manufacturers of the power electronics and are offering reference designs for our customers. Okay, so what we've actually set up is on our external web website, we have a um, link that we can show here where we have a number of reference designs available. So already for the area of silicon carbide MOSFETs and for the area of GAN transistor devices, we can offer already 10 um, different reference designs, and these are all um, publicly available to the customers. So when customers actually go um, and, and have a look on our website, there will be a reference design there for them, and also a bill of materials, schematics, and some of the um, test results that we've had, for example, driving um, our gate drive device and, um, you know, uh, for, um, power electronic from from Wolf Speed or Infineon, for example. Um, uh, <laughs> Lisa, yeah. I'm really really interested. Could could we take a, a look at one of those reference designs? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it would make sense to look at the um, the silicon carbide uh, reference design that we have here with one of our latest products. So um, this is, for example, for the ACFL three one six one. That is a new um, 10 amp gate driver, which can be used for both silicon carbide or GAN reference designs. In this case, the one we're showing here is for a 1200 volt, 100 amp silicon carbide reference design. And it is a half bridge evaluation board, which um, features Wolf Speed silicon carbide MOSFET in a, um, that's this uh, part number from the C3M0021120K okay, that we're showing here on the slide. And the, uh, that, the evaluation board uses two single channel um, ACFL3161 devices um, to drive both the top and the bottom bridge of the silicon carbide MOSFET. It has two outputs to turn on and off the silicon carbide device efficiently, and it has a wide supply range of up to 30 volts. So that's suitable for the positive, either positive 15 volt 
or 18 volt um, bidirectional uh, voltage operation. It has more than 100 kilovolts per microsecond of noise immunity and a very fast switching DVDT. So customers can actually um, take the design. There are limited um, evaluation boards available through our website and um, basically can test then uh, the performance with the actual um, silicon carbide device. And it's also this kind of a setup is actually um, can be potentially used for other uh, silicon carbide devices with from from other manufacturers with similar um, characteristics. Fantastic. It, that, it's really great talking about um, silicon carbide and, and GAN with you today. But um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it is uh, it's becoming a lot more widely used. But what more can you tell us? What, what, what more is there to look forward to from Broadcom? Right, so this we also see as a, as as uh, the beginning, and so we are continuing to develop um, products in that area. And for example, we just mentioned this ACFL um, three one six one device, and that is a single channel driver. And we will be actually releasing the dual channel device, so the partner um, product, very soon. Um, and that will have the advantage that you only you can drive practically from one side. The, the positive rail and from the other side, the negative rail in, in a typical um, half bridge design. And we have here then typical um, aspects that we are addressing is a very, very short propagation delay from that device and a you know temperature range, which we also have from the ACFL from minus 40 to 125 degrees C. So um, in terms of package, uh, with the latest, not only with the ACFL 3161 I mentioned, and also this device, dual device coming up, we use a um, new comparative tracking index of 600 volts, which means that these devices can also be used in much higher voltage applications. Now, this is the safety aspect or working yeah. voltage yeah. that these devices can address. And also with that, we will be releasing a new reference design um, where we are working together with Nexperia. That's actually already available, um, the ACFJ3262, with a Nexperia um, GAN device, 650 volt GAN device. So as mentioned at the beginning of this interview, uh, the, the GAN um, devices have a, a sweet spot up to 650 volt and are typically being used in those kind of um, inverter applications. So Fantastic. that's what we're coming up with. Yeah. So plenty to look forward to there, uh, Lisa. Absolutely. Uh, Lisa, it's been really great talking to you today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your time with DesignSpark and I would love to have you on again soon and we can continue conversations around power electronics uh, and whatever else we want to be talking to Broadcom about in the very near future. Great, great. It's been a pleasure to be here and um, I look forward to, to hearing more from DesignSpark as well.